Woi woi, woi woi, woi woi. Then it then up on the radio again. Yo, if you want no smoke free weed, go board yourself. You need to go plant a seed. Go board yourself. Make your knowledge increase. Go board yourself. Go board yourself. Hey, all right. Welcome to episode 73 of Grow Bud Yourself. We have a great show in store for you guys this week. Uh, Our interview is with Brett Stevens. He's the CEO of FOS LED Lighting. He's going to uh, talk about new advancements in light emitting diode technology, specifically for cannabis production. Uh, We have our strain of the fortnight, plus my tips on diagnosing and treating a thrip infestation and grow Q&A from listeners. Episode number 73 is brought to you by Organic Rev Growth Stimulant, Rocket Seeds, Sweet Leaf Plant Nutrients, and Excelsior Extracts. Hey, so if you're looking to grow healthier, faster growing plants and increase your yields, Organic Rev is the answer. Rev is safe to use from seed through harvest and its active ingredients are 100% naturally occurring. Rev is a growth stimulant, not a nutrient. Simply adding Rev to your current regimen can deliver dramatic results. And because it's not a nutrient, Rev can't burn your plants. Growers turn to Rev to increase fertilizer efficiency, improve their nutrient uptake and the root zone development, stimulate seed germination, reduce transplant shock and more. On a personal note, I've been using Rev and it works great. My plants absolutely love it and they respond immediately by greening up and looking healthy and strong. And now our listeners can receive 10% off their first order of organic Rev with the promo code GBY10. That's good for 10% off your entire purchase at Organic Rev. So head to organicrev.com slash GBY10 and find out what Rev can do for your plants. All right, welcome back. And episode 73 is in full effect. I uh, should mention that Organic Rev, uh, our sponsor, has a free bottle promo right now going. Um, you can get a four ounce bottle of Organic Rev free. Just pay $5 for the shipping and handling. Um, that'll make four gallons of a very powerful organic growth stimulant. So check out organicrev.com slash GBY10. And get your free bottle. It works with any other nutrient system. It's a, a booster, a stimulant, and uh, it's very effective. So uh, ref up your garden with Organic Rev. It's a floor wax. It's a dessert topping. It's Organic <laughs> Rev. No, that's good yeah. stuff and a great deal. So, um, yeah, five bucks and you get to try this out and, you know, stimulate those plants. That, that, sounds, like a, that sounds like a good deal. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. It's, I think it's a great deal. Indeed. And here we are in episode 73 of Grow Bud Yourself. Yes. And 73, significant date, you know, I guess, 1973. A lot of music, you know, getting out of the, the whole 60s thing into the 70s thing, you know, growing out some mutton chops and, <laughs> you know, Fu Manchus and things like that. Preparing for the disco revolution. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> so we... We have some news that we should probably get into. A lot is going on. Yeah, well, let's hear it. (laughs) Yes, well, you know, last week we we said that we would uh, discuss a little bit about what's going on in our home state of New York, uh, which, of course, legalized cannabis earlier this year when uh, then-Governor Andrew Cuomo signed a bill into law. He's no longer the governor, but the the law is sticking, so that's good. But the problem in New York is that we've just been very, well, I say we, uh, our officials have been very, very lax in getting this program rolled out. And essentially what that comes down to is that Cuomo especially just failed to appoint members to regulatory boards that are going to oversee the industry and set some of the rules for the industry. And until these boards are filled, we we can't really move on. We can't start the retail sales and all that good stuff. So the new uh, governor who took over for him... um, Hochul. Kathy Hochul. She's actually done a better job. She's gotten a couple of of people uh, appointed to these boards, but we're still not there yet. And so one group has decided to take matters into their own hands. The uh, the St. Regis Mohawk tribe, which is way up in northern New York, right at the Canadian border. 
They passed their own ordinance earlier this year that allows cannabis to be uh, grown, processed, and even sold on tribal land there. And so they have started taking applications for retail businesses. And the St. Regis Mohawk tribe is going to approve um, cannabis business licenses, and they'll allow operators to open retail shops on their land. And they could beat New York State to market by more than a year, because at this point, retail sales aren't expected to launch in New York until uh, late 2022. Wow. Yeah, well, I think that's great. And I think, you know, uh, that the laws on tribal lands are, are very different. I think that they, you know, uh, have a lot more control over what goes down. Um, you know, the, and the, indige the indigenous people of the Americas, you know, sort of have a right to that as well. I mean, I don't think, you know, they have treaties and deals that were made years and years ago. Um, and many that have been broken and, and a, a history of, of, just awful, awful engagements with um, federal authorities and, and, and all of that. And, and in some ways, you know, they have, have benefited from having um, these things on, you know, like different rules for tribal lands, like um, casinos, for instance. Um, and so I think it's a no brainer. I think it makes perfect sense uh, for them to do that. I also think that the governor, uh, the new governor, Kathy Hochul, is very uh, gung-ho about um, getting this all implemented and passed and, and has sort of, you know, put her f uh, the pedal to the metal, uh, whereas I think, you know, it was much slower under under um, Cuomo. And, I, you know, for, the, for our friends uh, who, you know, watch The Simpsons, I posted a, t a tweet that said uh, some folks... We'll never we'll legalize never cannabis. Some oh. folks will, like New York's new governor, Kathy Hochul. Oh, I love it. <laughs> nice, now, nice tweet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, I, I think uh, even though the governor is uh, implementing these things much quicker, I still think that uh, there's no reason why uh, that indigenous people on tribal land should not be uh, able to do whatever they want really on that on that uh, property as especially without hurting people and and uh, making some money for for the tribe and for the people there because I think it's it's also very important um, so yeah I'm, I think that's great news and uh, great news all around great news f uh, for uh, the St. Regis Mohawk tribe and great news also for the rest of the state you know and I think the sooner the better for for the whole state and for the whole region, you know, so. Yeah, Governor Hochul has every reason to to make this program a success because it could be what gets her uh, elected in the next yeah. term. Yeah. But well, what's really yeah. interesting, if we're talking about all this infighting, is it's happening even on tribal lands because what's happened there is that some tribe members have started their own retail stores without even going through the regulatory process with um, with the tribe. They just open the stores because cannabis is legal and it's allowed to be sold there. And so the the officials on that land are now saying that, you know, we don't want this to happen. We want those stores to shut down so we could actually take these uh, license applications, which, you know, we get some cash for that and then award the license, uh, award the licenses out to these businesses. And then they have to pay us to operate. But, you know, with tribe members just opening their own retail shops, it's sort of cutting out uh, the tribe and, and stopping them from collecting the, the money that they could be making from this process. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, it's shaping up to get even more interesting. I mean, I, at the uh, New York March, uh, I, uh, one of the speakers uh, was a woman from the Shinnecock tribe out in Long Island. Uh, and th they're doing the same sort of thing. I mean, they're growing hemp and, and also... Uh, very interested in doing cannabis. So, you know, we, we should have uh, someone from from one of these tribes on the show sometime soon uh, to talk about it and let us know, like, what's what's going on at, at the ground level and, like, you know, how, how, you know, they're able to do this. They've been left out in a lot of ways um, from all these revenues and things and um, certainly should not be. Indeed. So that's what's happening in New York, but uh, the <laughs> there's more going on at the federal level, and this is really interesting. There's actually been a lot of movement, and you know we discussed this a, a 
couple of months back in the summer on the show. Um, I think that was right around when when Schumer and Booker came out with their uh, cannabis legalization bill. But right now what's happening, uh, you know, at the time we were saying that Schumer, who's the, the Senate majority leader now, he doesn't want this banking act, the Safe uh, Banking Act, to, to go through because he views it as incremental uh, reform. What he really wants is full-bore, end-of-prohibition uh, cannabis reform. But <laughs> what happened is, uh, you know, about a year ago, I would say, the uh, the House passed the SAFE Act, but it just stalled in um, in the Senate. In fact, I don't think it got a vote in the Senate because of, of Schumer. So what happened is they rolled the SAFE Act, or aspects of it, Essentially, for people that don't know, that that act is going to protect banks that service state legal cannabis businesses. So it's basically a protection for banks that work with um, pot businesses in legal cannabis states. And they rolled that legislation into the defense spending bill. And the defense spending bill passed the House, and now it's up in the Senate. But the problem is that key senators, including Schumer, including Booker, are working to block it because, once again, they do not want that banking legislation to move forward. They want legalization to move forward. And this was a debate that we we discussed, uh, you know, a few months back on the show, whether it makes sense to to fight incremental change or whether it makes sense to just get whatever we can get, you know, as much as we could get. It seems like the Banking Act is there for the taking. It's something that passed the House, it would pass the Senate, and I believe that Biden would sign it, so we could have that. But the Democratic uh, senators in control of the Senate are fighting against it. Additionally, a, a different legalization bill, not Chuck Schumer's, but actually Gerald Nadler's uh, bill has uh, passed a House committee, and that's the Moore Act. You might have heard of that one. That's the Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement Act. That passed uh, the House committee, and it looks like it could pass the House as well. So there's a lot of movement right now federally, but the big issue really is whether uh, Schumer and these other uh, Democratic members of the Senate will allow banking, the Banking Act to move forward. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I, you know, I, I can see both sides of this, but we got to get something done and incremental is better than nothing. Right. And um, certainly handling the banking issue when m- many more people are okay with it, like and in, in signing off on that uh, gets it out of the way. And we can move on. Really, I mean, what I'm gunning for personally is, is, uh, you know, taking cannabis off of the schedule one and off of all the schedules, not, you know, re- rescheduling, but descheduling. And I think that would go a long way um, for federal legalization. And then, you know, we need the banking. We need all of it. it. It all has to happen, but it doesn't all have to happen in the same bill. And, you know, whatever we can get done, let's get it done. And, and it's already been too long. There's too many people in jail still. There's too much, uh, you know, who's going to be the last person let out on a nonviolent cannabis offense. Um, some of these people have served many decades and it's just, uh, you know, I, it's true. We got to fix the banking, but there's a lot of other things that have to happen. And, uh, I, I just, I can't just, you know, draw a line in the sand and say, it has to be everything all at once. Um, especially if that may or may not pass, you know, I, I think, you know, politics is the art of what's possible. Uh, it's not always what you want, but you get there eventually. And you've seen that with, you know, a lot of different things. It takes a long time. And we're, we've moved forward tremendously. There's been some setbacks, but like, you know, let's get the banking thing figured out right now. You know, uh, the more companies that and the more businesses that can invest and get out loans and put money in the bank, the more legitimate the industry is and the quicker we can move on uh, to all the other issues as well. But like, let's get, you know, the squares on board, uh, and let's get our money in the bank and all of that. And then, you know, let's get everything else. But I, you know, let's get what's possible and incremental is better than nothing. So, you know, it's not always the best thing and you can't always get what you want as our friends, uh, in the Rolling Stones said, but you get what you need. And what we need is, uh, something, something, better than nothing yeah for sure 
And the older you get, the more you realize, like, take what you can get and then ask for more. But don't, um, don't let the perfect be uh, the enemy of the good. Do you know, just to play devil's advocate or maybe to um, better explain to our listeners where Schumer is coming from, his point is essentially, and whether or not this is true, I don't know, but what he's what he thinks is that if um, banking passes, if, if lawmakers uh, pass that act, that they'll then say, well, we've done something for cannabis and now we don't have to worry about it as much. There's not as much pressure on us. So, you know, there's not going to be as much support or a full legalization bill. And I guess Schumer is further thinking that if his bill passes and cannabis is removed from the CSA, uh, you know, then banking will be a non-issue anyhow. Yeah, well, uh, I just, I hope we get something before, you know, we need to then go back and vote and and make sure we've got more people representing us uh, and not like the interests of pharmaceutical companies and prison guard unions and all these other, uh, you know, minor interests comparatively to cannabis consumers and people who just want to be free. Indeed. I really like that Hochul tweet. That was good stuff. (laughs) Uh, So that's a that's a little bit of a look at what's going on in the world of weed. Uh, But we have an excellent interview coming up. Yes, indeed. We're going to talk to Brett Stevens. He's the CEO of FOS LED Lighting. And uh, they are at the forefront of light emitting diode technology, um, lighting, you know, massive, massive uh, grows right down to uh, small tents. Uh, so an interesting interview with Brett. Uh, why don't we take a break and come back uh, with Brett Stevens from FOS Lighting. If you're ready to start your own home grow, you're going to need some seeds. Fortunately, our sponsor Rocket Seeds has you covered. You can find seeds for hundreds of high-quality cannabis varieties at rocketseeds.com, including many of our strains of the Fortnite. Rocket Seeds boasts an incredible inventory of quality-tested cannabis seeds. Whether you're looking for feminized, autoflowering, regular, CBD, or fast version seeds, Rocket Seeds has it all. Plus, Rocket Seeds ships internationally and discreetly and provides excellent customer service. And as a special promotion just for our listeners, you can use the code GBY10 to get 10% off your order at Rocket Seeds. So follow at Rocket Seeds on Instagram. Remember to tell them Danny sent you. And check out rocketseeds.com today and get growing. All right, welcome back. And we are speaking with Brett Stevens. Brett is the CEO and one of the co-founders of FOS, uh, which makes LED lighting. Brett, welcome to the show. Thank you. Appreciate being on here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, your background, uh, how you got interested in, in cannabis to begin with, and, and sort of uh, where you're coming from in the industry. Yeah, uh, so... Uh, we, we'd always had this kind of on our radar. Um, you know, it, it was something that, uh, that we had been looking into, I mean, it, and, uh, looking at uh, for a long time and being serial entrepreneurs, we always look for a way to provide value in an industry. Um, and, uh, so when it went rec legal here and, and, uh, actually we were here before it went rec, we, uh, we came here to Vegas before it went rec legal. Uh, we were looking at either California or, uh, or Vegas and Vegas was just a, a better spot for a startup and a better spot for um, a, a, like a business uh, environment. So we, we came to Vegas and, um, and yeah, in uh, 2014, 2015 and uh, started, started working in a grow here. Uh, we invested in the grow, one of the, one of the licensed grow here. And right away we noticed that um, one of the, the bit, the big things that needed to change was lights for sure. Right, and and you weren't happy with the uh, the HID lighting, uh, I guess due to heat issues and and a number of other things. I mean, I'm sure in Vegas that's got to be a huge concern. Uh, so yeah, tell me about uh, you know your your experiences with uh, HIDs and how you were able to develop uh, LEDs specifically for cannabis growing. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so 
HIDs are great uh, when when it comes to growing. Um, I would never say that they're not they're not great. The, the, they do have their problems though, right? Um, they're they're very inefficient um, and they're they're very hot. They take bulb changes and um, there's there's a lot of things that you, know, you get spectrum shift and all these other things that happen with with HID and HPS bulbs. Anytime you're building a burning a filament, that's a situation, right? A degradation. So. In Vegas, what we were having is we were having to run night cycles because the days were just too too hot. And so competing with the nightlife here um, is hard to get manpower because, you know, you can have a busser or a door guy making 100 grand a year. <laughs> They're not going to quit their job at a nightclub to go work at, to work at a grow. Uh, so, you know, that was we, we saw right away, you know, take out the, the filament bulb. You know, originally when we started designing and developing, it was going to be something proprietary to our grow. We were going to run high power, um, high power LED, and be one of the first to ever do it because at the time nobody was running high power LED. LED was that thing that was like, you know, four hundred to six hundred watts, and I mean, still kind of similar to that right now. But um, nobody really understood, like I guess, the, the two fundamental principles of of photochemical reactions and uh, or, uh, transformations, rather. Uh, and so when that happens. Um, we were, we could see a huge hole in the market. Uh, and so we started designing and developing and putting a ton of money into understanding, uh, truly, uh, you know, the, the stark Einstein law and truly understand the, the, the value that of high power LED could, could have. Yeah. And, and, uh, you actually develop them specifically for cannabis. And it's interesting because early on, uh, you know, I was at high times for many years and we would get LEDs, uh, in to test and, you know, the knock on them was, you know, they were, uh, they were pricey and they were uh, also really not developed for cannabis. They were sort of repurposed from other, uh, you know, either, either growing leafy greens or something like that, or even other applications. Uh, and of course, you know, they got that reputation uh, early on, you know, the purple kind of uh, reputation. So tell me a little bit about wh- how you were able to uh, develop something specific to cannabis and also uh, that arrive, you know, rivals, if not outperforms uh, HIDs in some ways. Yeah, and that's an awesome question, man. It's, it's really um, refreshing to, to talk with somebody that, that really does understand this like this. It's great. Um, so when we when we went to it, right, you know, cannabis is a very particular type of plant. And uh, you're, you're totally right. Um, everybody else is retrofitting. And uh, folks, we didn't want to race to the market with a Me Too light. Right. We could have went to any private label manufacturer and whatnot, just like anybody else is doing and, you know, come from leafy greens and put our name on something and just sell marketing. Uh, But that's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to understand the plant. You have this like you have this weed that grows as tall as a tree and flowers like a flower. And it's just this really unique um, plant. Right. So um, we we started looking into what kind of PPFD levels could this plant take, right? Where does it grow the best? And and what are the PPFD levels? And for the people that are out there that don't know what PPFD, it's photosynthetic photon flux density. And that's uh, basically the, the, um, the density of the light that's hitting the plant. And, and, um, and, and so for us, it was like, it's, it was looking at, you know, can this, this uh, plant be a racehorse, right? So uh, compared to something like tomatoes, tomatoes, you know, you have 400 to 500, uh, PPFD, and that's about the optimal place where you'll see uh, tomatoes grow, right? Uh, well, when we started looking into this, and we started looking at the studies and, and working with some some scientists and some some botanists and everybody else, we started seeing that that this plant will take a ton of light and it will keep growing. It'll keep growing, and so um, I mean, uh, this isn't this isn't really new things. We you know the people have, have learned this for a long time, so. Once we started doing, once we saw that you know this plant will take this, then that's when we started really experimenting on um, what will a high power LED look like, um, how will it perform, what would be the ideal light. I mean, it took us two and a half years to develop uh, the A3I that we have right now. I mean, and, and that's solid testing under tissue culture uh, here at GB Sciences. Um, we tested for almost two years, making sure that um, and testing directly against HPS, making sure that we had a, a solid commercial um alternative to hps uh and so that's what uh, that's how it kind of it, it was born yeah and another thing that's interesting to me about uh your designs is that uh they're actually waterproof they can be uh taken down and power washed i think a lot of people don't realize that 
you know, how much, uh, you know, mold and pests and things can hide within uh, the fixtures and themselves and, and, and are on them. Uh, so tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So um, IP, IP grading for us was, was paramount. We wanted to make sure that, um, cause nobody was doing that. Right. Um, uh, for anybody that's not IP as it's ingression proof, right. It's a testing where uh, they, they submerge your light or power wash your light or, or, um, you know, basically test to make sure that, uh, that no dust mold mildew or anything else get in the light. Um, and as well as any, um, moisture. So, yeah, so IP rating was huge for us. We were the first one coming to the market with an IP 67 fixture, 68 fixture now too. Um, we really wanted to make sure that we could keep a clean room environment, uh, cause obviously, as we all know, a uh, commercial setting needs to have things in place that, that can mitigate any kind of issues and being able to power wash and submerge the light if you needed to or whatnot, um, to make sure that it's, it's really a clean fixture. Um, that was, that was first like right on top of the list it was a that was a non-starter <laughs> yeah absolutely now um you have a, a number of different lights for different applications as well um you know greenhouse specific uh indoor specific home grow specific as well i think a lot of our listeners are growing in a tent for the most part or in a, a bedroom um and not so much you know in these huge warehouse type applications um, so tell me a little bit about the different, uh, lights and, and how they're specific to those applications. Yeah. So coming from the commercial world, um, we originally built this company, uh, around the commercial setting. Uh, our A3I is a monster of a, of a fixture, um, extremely powerful. It's, it's meant to, for the, the high bay applications. Um, and, and while we were, we were working and doing this, um, we had a lot of pressure, uh, on social media. And I mean, our phones were going off all the time, you know, um, where people were asking for us to make a, um, a mini version for the home grow. Right. Uh, so, uh, after about two years in the market and in the commercial side of things, we said, okay, we'll, we'll make this, this light for, um, for the home grow market. Um, we, we appreciate the home grow market, but we just really, um, were basing our we didn't have the infrastructure around being able to support that at the time we were just mainly a commercial uh, uh, facility um, uh, company so once we once we built around a, an infrastructure to be able to, to, to create this we basically made a, a smaller version of our a3i called our aries uh, that aries is basically the same control board same power supply same diodes um, same ip rating um, con- connects to our controller uh, it's, it's an, it's amazing light. Uh, that, that light is, uh, it, it, it crushes. It does very, very well. Um, it has a spectrum changes so that you can run through our spectrums, which we spend also a lot of time and money making sure that the spectrums, uh, were what the plant wants, uh, because that blue red ratio is a very delicate ratio. And like you were saying before, the purple lights of the past, um, <laughs> those, uh, that was a spectrum that they thought, uh, you know, was, was going to do well with, with cannabis. And it just really has never been able to perform, uh, it's been able to grow, but, but not really, really perform like, like, a something like, um, middle of the road spectrum. So, um, yeah, so that we make the Aries, uh, the Aries is, is a home grow light. Uh, it's, it's phenomenal. It's a phenomenal light. And then we also make our, our F1Bs. We see a lot of people putting our F1Bs in the tents as well. Uh, so we have, um, that's a, that's a more cost effective light than, um, our Aries. So the thing is with, um, with our fixtures is, is we're a no compromise product, right? Um, if it's all the way down to the soldering to, um, the way that we pot our power supplies. I mean, a lot of people ask why they're so heavy. And the reason why is because, you know, if you take a power supply and you fill it with glue, it's going to help, um, take the heat out of that power supply one, but it's also going to help if you ever drop it or if it's ever submerged, if you have a power supply that's fully encased in glue, uh, no water or moisture can get in there. Right. That's something that very expensive high end electronics equipment does. Right. Not not cheap anything. That's very high end stuff. So we do that. We pot every every component of our fixture. So that's that's something that's really cool is that is that all of our components are, are glued. And and, um, and so all of that costs money. Right. Uh, the diodes are they're top of the line. The, the polycarbonate lensing is top of the line. The aluminum is top of the line. Everything with that is built top of the line. So um, we knew that the home grow market also wanted a, a, a lower barrier to entry product as well. So we also sell our F1Bs, uh, which we use in vertical farming and, um, and rack systems as well. 
Nice. Yeah. And I would imagine right now in Las Vegas, uh, there's probably a ton of uh, facilities that are using uh, your lights uh, as, you know, industrial strength, uh, you know, in industrial sized uh, facilities for some of the big grows as well. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. I mean, this is our hometown. We, we offer, um, we offer, you know, kind of the folks family discount here in in Las Vegas, which because, uh, you know, we want to make sure that our, our flag is flying here strong. (laughs) Right on. Um, now you also have a background in, uh, jujitsu and mixed martial arts, MMA. Uh, now how does that, uh, incorporate itself into basically, you know, managing, uh, a, a, a huge company that, uh, you know, oversees, uh, large scale operations. Yeah. So, I mean, um, it's, uh, I, I do have a background in that. Uh, that was kind of my first love and, <laughs> uh, what I, what I did right out of, uh, right out of high school into college and, and, uh, you know, fought pro a couple of fights, um, about 15 pro fights. And, um, I've competed in, um, some, some pretty, pretty big t- tournaments when it comes to jujitsu and whatnot as well. Um, so, yeah, I would say the the things that, that kind of cross over very much is is that you know you're you're always going to get kind of beat down and you got to kind of roll with the punches and um and and always look for that next round if if you're having a tough round right um and and when it's good uh you know keep 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 doing what's good right um and uh, I think the one thing that you learn the most out of all this is kind of respect right um, respect for your opponent or respect also for uh, the the people that um, that you're working with. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's one of the one things that we, we really pride ourselves on in, in the company is, is all of our clients are, are, you know, that is our priority, uh, and uh, making sure that we're on a first name basis and, and really working with them, uh, on as personally, uh, a basis as possible. That's great. Uh, and tell me a little bit about, um, R and D and what, uh, sort of the, the future holds for, uh, for your company and also just for, uh, lighting in general, uh, for cannabis. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're always developing, um, every single day. I mean, we have a team 35, uh, of 35 engineers. We have, uh, engineers that are looking at material. We have engineers looking at, uh, so like, I mean, anything and everything that we can, that we really can look at. We have a couple, um, really groundbreaking things that we've been working on for about the last year and a half that, that hopefully will come out, uh, Q1 2022, if it's, if it's already. And, uh, it's something that, that, um, has been overlooked very heavily. Nobody in the whole world is doing it that I know of, um, indoor. So, uh, we, we have some really, really, really exciting things, um, coming up, but, uh, yeah, I mean, as far as R and D, we, uh, I mean, I think we're on our ninth version of our A3I because, uh, anytime we find anything that's more powerful or more efficient, more reliable, um, it gets put into the next rev almost immediately. It, 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 the line changes and, and things get, get done almost instantly. Uh, you know, that's another thing that we, we really pride ourselves on is our failure rate. Um, we, we operate on less than a 1% failure rate and we're, we're putting out tens of thousands of units. I mean, monthly, I mean, thousands and thousands of units monthly, and we work on a less than 1% failure rate. And that, 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 that also really comes down to our R and D. We, we do not rush to the market. When we come to the market, we're coming to the market with something that's reliable, something that we have tested a lot, uh, and something that we trust and that we, we would look somebody in the face and know like they're going to be very successful with it. That's awesome. Um, let's shout out your partners as well, because, uh, it's, it's not just, uh, I guess you, uh, involved. So, uh, let Tell me a little bit about uh, your partners that you work with at, at FOS. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I always laugh. I'm, I always laugh. You know, I'm, I'm, I feel like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the weakest link in the whole team, right? Uh, you have Alex Gerard, who comes from Laser Guidance, and um, he's an engineer. Uh, that's one of our partners. This guy is um, five stars when it comes to the engineering world. Uh, he's incredible, right? Uh, he's a workhorse. So um, Alex Gerard is, is really one of the, the big pinnacles here. And and then we also have uh, Ben Arnett. Um, ben is, is was actually my, uh, one of my partners when uh, in our first grow here in Las Vegas. Yeah, we've been working together ever since. I mean, he's he's kind of uh, yeah, he's he's one of my good friends, and and um, so we kind of went in this uh, kind of double teaming this thing together, uh, and then kind of assembled our team. And our team pretty much just primarily is um, our uh, our close family and our friends. Um, we also have you know Edwin Perez here and and James Bradley here who I've worked with for 
over a decade. I mean, we all moved here. We're all, we're all very close, good friends, and we all moved here from Minnesota together. Uh, so, I mean, this is a team that's been together for a very long time. That's great. Um, and why don't we also just uh, shout out, uh, you know, how people can follow uh, FOS on social media. I want to just get the spelling right, too. It's F-O-H-S-E, uh, which I believe is an acronym, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it uh, stands for the Future of Horticulture, Science and Engineering. Uh, and it, it worked out real well. Uh, originally, uh, when we were doing R&D, uh, the company was an LLC and, and it was called FOS, F-P-H-O-S. <laughs> as right. Which is uh, Greek for lighting, right? You got it. Yep. Hmm. And so then, uh, and so from there, you know, we, when, once we decided to bring this thing to market, uh, rather than kind of hog it, uh, cause originally, like I said, this was going to be something proprietary for our own grow. We were just going to do super high end, uh, and, and high power led. But once we saw the results, we were like, we have to bring this to market. Like we spent, we spent a ton of money. I'm talking millions of dollars, honestly, putting this light together. And when we did, and when we saw the results, I mean, the first thing we grew against was a solo stack led. Or, I mean, excuse me, Solstack HBS. And, uh, and the guys that, that were growing third party couldn't even believe the difference. I mean, they, they, you could see, you know, the photomorphogenic response to the plant where they're stretching into our lights from the HBS because it was just, it was look, I mean, the plant was looking for where it was going to get the most food and, uh, the most light. And so, uh, it was, it was really, really crazy to see that, um, that's, that set up. But yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think that's the, what makes it most interesting is these lights are specifically developed for cannabis, which is very different from a leafy green or anything else. I mean, it's a hungry plant. Uh, if it's provided with uh, the proper light, it it will grow. You know, you can almost watch it grow. Uh, you know, that's there's a reason it's called a weed in that way. And also, uh, the other interesting thing is, you know, so much I've learned about growing over the years is about controlling environment and you know, so it's not just about the light, but also about the heat that the light emits and, and, and how you're going to deal with that. And that just requires, you know, with, uh, you know, the high intensity discharge lighting, so much more HVAC and so much more, uh, you know, humidifiers or dehumidifiers, depending on your situations. And, mm-hmm. and I just think, uh, you know, the, the amount of efficiency from LEDs isn't just from the fact that the light uses less electric electricity, but also that you're using less of everything else. Um, oh yeah. I mean, manpower, uh, people changing bulbs, uh, right. risking a bulb breaking and lighting a table on fire. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot that goes into, um, I mean, that, that, or there's a lot that, that when you weigh the pros and cons led versus HPS, I mean, to be honest, um, if you ever see an A3I room, you would never even think about an HPS ever again. If you ever see one, <laughs> if you, if you walk into one one of those big rooms where um, there's a there's um, an A3I hung, it 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 will it will every time I walk into a room, every time and I've been in like we have what um, in the states two hundred and eighty or something almost three hundred clients in the states. Every single time I walk in any of the rooms that are A3Is, I just am like, whoa, this is this is truly different than anything else. Like when when you look at uh, this thing called the square inverse law or the inverse square law rather um it, a lot of people don't understand that that um the lensing on that on the a3i also helps like with what you're talking about like leaf surface temperature and um there's this thing called a divergent angle of light which once you bring in the divergent angle of light that um it changes right so we're one of the only lights that i know of that has um polycarbonate lensing and that lensing helps to increase the leaf surface temperature without increasing the, the, the heat around the, the room. So you don't have that black body radiation bouncing around the room. You don't have this. You have uh, a light. It's kind of like a spotlight or a floodlight, right? So when you see that angle come in, um, what, the, what the inverse square law is, basically you're losing half of the, um, half of the light for every uh, um, distance that you're coming out, right? And that, that is really only applicable to like, say something like the sun, which is round or a bulb, which is round, like a light bulb. Um, or, uh, you know, when you see the LEDs that don't use lensing, uh, then they will become very inefficient very quickly, uh, which is why you see all the rest of the LEDs that have to be slammed onto the plant. Right. Uh, and they don't realize that you can, um, you know, you can, you can use lensing. Uh, it's going to take a lot of time and money and effort to, to understand how that lensing works, but, um, once you do, um, then you can kind of 
a defeat, I guess, if you will, the inverse square law with, with lensing. And you're able to heat the leaf surface temperature, which is a huge part of growing monster cannabis. You know, understanding that process, like the Rubisco, um, understanding uh, how that affects the plant. So, um, yeah. That's, That's a, great. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, uh, Brett Stevens, CEO and co founder of FOSE. Uh, that's F O H S E dot com or on Instagram, F O H S E uh, period I N C Inc. Uh, on Facebook, uh, F O H S E. And if you want to follow Brett himself, it's Brett Stevens underscore F O H S E uh, on Instagram. So uh, thank you so much, Brett, for being on the show and uh, illuminating us as to uh, your LED lighting and uh, and everything else. Thank you. It was a pleasure being on. Thank you. And uh, we will be back after these messages. If you're a grower or you're thinking about starting your first crop, then you need to know about Sweet Leaf Plant Nutrients. Sweet Leaf has an incredible line of organic fertilizers and, of course, their legacy line that includes organic and some synthetic fertilizers. So check them out at sweetleaf.com. That's S-U-I-T-E-L-E-A-F.com. The code DANKO15 gets you 15% off everything at Sweet Leaf. That's 15% off their signature line of nutrients as well as essentials like complete indoor hydroponic grow tent kits and grow lights, plus awesome apparel, backpacks, and much more. If you join our Patreon, you'll get access to additional codes worth 20 and even 25% off. All Patreon supporters also receive free Sweet Leaf nutrients just for signing up. Sweet Leaf provides all the tools necessary for the modern gardener. Check them out at sweetleaf.com and remember the code DANKO15. Hey, all right. Welcome back. And uh, we should mention also our advertiser and friends at Sweet Leaf have a special promo running right now for their Crazy K005 product. Um, that is a potassium booster designed for late stage gardening systems. Right now, you can get a free 32 ounce bottle before anybody else if you sign up as a Big Bud or Heady Chief level supporter at patreon.com slash Danny Danko. So uh, you get a bunch of free stuff if you sign up. So join our Patreon community and uh, you will get some free Crazy K005 from Sweet Leaf. It's a good deal. Our renewing members get that that bottle as well. Yes. Check us out on Patreon. It's worth it. And uh, thank you to Brett Stevens. Very enlightening. Get it? Lightning uh, interview? <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Thank you to Brett. Very interesting all of the developments in LED and especially for specific to cannabis growing. Uh, oh my gosh. Do you hear that? <laughs> and yes, this is a Fortnite. And yes, this is a Fortnite. Strain of the Fortnite. Fortnite. What do you got for us? Uh, what do you got for us this week? Strain of the Fortnite. <laughs> Strain of the Fortnite. <laughs> There it is. There it is. So, strain of the fortnight. What do you got this fortnight? Yes. So, I want to talk about a strain called Critical Mass, and it is from SunWest Genetics, uh, which you can actually get at RocketSeeds.com, uh, one of our advertisers, um, and you can actually get ten percent off, I believe, with our code there, uh, GBY10. But Critical Mass is a feminized strain. Um, this goes back a ways. It's very, very popular uh, in Spain. Um, it's basically uh, Afghani uh, crossed with a skunk number one. So it's a very indica dominant uh, strain. It's got a pretty somewhat drowsy sort of high, which is really good for uh, insomnia and uh, pain relief. Uh, so a lot of times people ask me, like, what's a great indica? And you know, this is one that's really easy to grow as well. Um, critical mass is basically a great one for like commercial farming, uh, for outdoor growing, uh, definitely resistant to mold and pests. The only issue is, uh, you know, if it's an area with high moisture, uh, you can get some mold and bud rot because it's just so dense, uh, which definitely makes it like, gives it that indica bag appeal. Um, so please, you know, critical mass 
is available uh, five seeds, 10 seeds, or 25 seed packs um, at rocketseeds.com. Uh, and you can get that 10% discount using our code as well. Um, what's interesting is Critical Mass also has a pretty decent CBD ra uh, amount, not like CBD dominant, but enough to sort of blend with the THC. And uh, I'm not sure what the exact ratio is, uh, but it's a nice, I think it's kind of like a four to one or a five to one THC to CBD, um, which is pretty like reliable for people that, you know, might be worried about uh, panic attacks or anxiety uh, from cannabis. This is like the opposite of that for most people. So definitely, you know, it does have a high THC level, um, but it, but the, the CBD amount sort of counters that in some ways, not like one to one. Uh, but definitely um, good for, you know, stress or, or pain or even just general anxiety, which I feel like everybody has a little bit of. Uh, so check them out. Uh, it's SunWest Genetics, and they are available at rocketseeds.com. And that is the strain of the Fortnite, Critical Mass Feminized. Critical Mass. It's a great name for a strain. So, yes, that was our <laughs> strain of the Fortnite and uh, now it is time for a little grow tip each week. Dan likes to give a tip that's going to help you, our listeners, become better growers. So what do you want to talk about this week? Yeah, so this week I want to talk about thrips. Um, thrips are an insect that, um, aside from maybe spider mites, is probably the second most uh, likely to infest your cannabis plants. Uh you know, there's a few other ones that are vying for that title, but thrips are really annoying uh, and awful. And they're these slender, uh, very tiny insects. They have these little wings, um, and there's different species of them. But basically, they they feed uh, by puncturing and sucking up the moisture from your plants, uh, and that's really really bad. Uh, they're basically the vegetarians we want to get rid of when we're gardening. Thrips are, you know, a lot of times they can come from uh, houseplants. A lot of times you're getting them uh, even in the soil that you can buy. Um, the eggs are super tiny uh, and they're pretty resilient. They're pretty tough. Like, you know, it's one of those infestations that, you know, sometimes it's hard to conquer, but, you know, you, you, you fight back. Uh, and, you know, certain things, obviously, uh, high temperatures, uh, you know, they like that, just like spider mites, like high temperatures um, and fairly low humidity. You'll notice basically like small black dots on the leaves. That's the poop of the th of the thrips. Um, they're usually hanging out more on the underside of the leaves, but then they go to the top of the leaves to feed. Um, it's definitely pretty annoying. Um, you can use... You know, there's different soaps, insecticidal soaps, potassium soaps, uh, natural pyrethrins, which are great. Um, there's also predators um, that you can use on thrips, which are great as well. I've heard great things actually from uh, our friends and advertisers, actually, uh, Elaine and Tommy from Excelsior Extracts, about a product called Pure Ag. Um, if you go to pureagproducts.com, um, they have a pest control that's food grade. Um, non-toxic, non-hazardous, and uh, definitely has worked well. Works on a lot of things, mites, uh, aphids, uh, all kinds of stuff, but particularly thrips as well. And they've seen a lot, they've had a lot of success with that and fighting back. Uh, Mercenary is another product from uh, Cultured Biologics with an X. Uh, also, it's an, a natural insecticide that works pretty well. Uh, somewhat pricey, but, you know, if you're trying to get rid of not just the thrips that you see, but the eggs and the juveniles and all of that, this is an insecticidal oil um, with emulsifier and uh, surfactants. Um, so, uh, and it doesn't involve neem oil. I used to recommend neem oil uh, for thrips, but I don't anymore. I think neem oil might be responsible for some of the uh, weird... Uh, diseases that are happening when people are smoking concentrates and not diseases, but, uh, syndromes where people are, are, are vomiting and stuff. It, I think it's, it's a concentration of neem oil. Uh, my personal belief, I don't know that for sure, but I don't recommend it anymore. I think, uh, it, it's, 
kind of just gets into the the leaf and inside and it's you know there's there's enough out there uh these days you can even make your own uh out of you know basically peppermint oil and things like that rosemary oil cinnamon oil um that's basically what some of these products can uh contain and uh again there's also predators and purag has a bunch of different products you can use um that are great so Basically, that's what you need to do to fight back against uh, thrips. I wouldn't go the full nuclear chemical route uh, just because, like I said, this is a plant that you're consuming, not some ornamental. So uh, you want to not be around involving toxic substances uh, in your integrated pest control. All right. Go and get those thrips. Kill them dead. Uh, now it is time to take some questions from our listeners. And uh, if you have a question that you would like answered on the show, uh, get in touch with us. You could email us, which is info at growbudyourself.com. What do you say we hop right in here? Let's do it. All right, let's start with, uh, with Arthur. And he writes, uh, hi, this is Arthur from New Zealand. I uh, just thought I would send an email to say I really enjoy your podcast. I just finished listening to all the GBY shows in one week. Wow. I didn't um, even know that was possible. Yeah, that is some binging right there. Uh, so I finished listening to all the GBY shows in one week, and now I'm starting on the free weed episodes. Valuable info to have learned. Weed is still illegal here, uh, but another referendum should make it legal. Time will tell. Anyway... I'm thinking of growing again. It's been about six years since I did my first grow. I have some bubblegum kush seeds uh, from a friend, so I'm going to start with them and see how it goes. I'm thinking of growing six seeds, vegging, and taking the tops off when big enough to clone to put under 12 by 12 to find males. Anything else required? I'm the guy who will try anything controversial. Thank you for your podcast. So, uh, yeah, what, what would you say to Arthur from New Zealand? Yeah, so uh, it's it makes sense what you're doing. You're growing out the six seeds, and you're taking the tops uh, and cloning them, and then putting those under twelve twelve. That'll tell you which of those seeds are male or female, or the seedlings that you're growing, uh, without actually flowering them. Uh, the reason you would want to do this is if you were going to keep those plants for mother plants, um, and you're not haven't indicated for sure that that's what you want to do. But if you, that's what you want to do. Um, then that would certainly be the way to go about that. Uh, but if you just want to sex the plants and get rid of the males, um, then you can just put all of them under 1212 uh, rather than taking the clones. So it's basically determined by whether, you know, you want to grow those seedlings out once and flower them and harvest, or if you want to have them as mother plants uh, so that you can take clones from them and harvest with the same mother plant and those clones uh time and time again um so if that's your plan is to get mother plants then you're on the right track um otherwise like i said if you're just growing from seed and flowering you don't necessarily need to use the cuttings to sex the plants you can just put them under 12 12 and get rid of the males so uh, i hope that helps you out and uh I hope the referendum passes uh, to make it legal in New Zealand as well, because you guys have a uh, great climate and, and some amazing growers and strains. Yeah, indeed. And anybody who can listen to uh, all of our episodes in a week, uh, you know, he deserves some credit that there has to be 80 plus hours of, of you and I yakking. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine doing that all in one week. But uh, yeah, hopefully he'll have fun listening to the free weeds, too, because uh we got some great episodes there as well, and, and some I'm, I'm obviously very uh, proud and fond of. Absolutely. All right, so thank you, uh, Arthur from New Zealand. Let's move on to Bozeman Bobby, and he writes, uh, Hey guys, I live in Montana, and I want to know what would happen to my plant if I left it out after the first frost. My buddy told me that the blast of cold weather can stress the plant into producing more THC as a defense mechanism. Is this true, or is my buddy full of guano? Which is a, a weed nerd's way of saying shit. So, <laughs> uh, what would you say here to Bozeman Bobby? Uh, yeah, I don't like the advice that your uh, your friend is giving you. I think that's a bum steer from your friend. He's, he's definitely full of guano. The, you know, there are obviously... Um, 
little things that stress plants and, and, you know, defense mechanisms, but I would not leave a plant out during a frost. Um, you know, a little bit of cold weather, fifties and sixties is fine. Um, frost is freezing and that's going to do damage. Uh, that's going to, you know, the plant matter and especially the trichomes, uh, are going to be affected very, uh, negatively by uh, any kind of prolonged exposure to cold. Um, and ultimately frost results in the death and the loss of plants. So I would harvest them before the first frost. Uh, if they're not close to being finished and you're worried about frost, uh, your best bet is either to bring them indoors under some grow lights, um, or protect them somehow outside with a, a greenhouse, uh, or some kind of covering that can keep them warmer at night or even a heater if necessary. But, uh, yeah, I would not, uh, allow a plant to stay outside during a frost. All right. Makes sense. Uh, thank you, Bozeman, Bobby. Let's, uh, let's do one more here. This is John K and he writes, uh, hello, as a successful grower in the eighties, I am in need of some medical advice. I have posed this question to several medical outlets to no avail, so I turn to the person I should have gone to in the first place. Yes, please come to Dan with all of your medical questions. (laughs) Dr. Danko. Yes, Dr. Dan. Um, He continues, I have had several operations on both eyes for macular holes, a detached retina in the left eye, and a, quote, buckle on the left eye as well. Macular holes cause a squiggle in your eyesight and they must be filled with an air bubble much like the plug of a boat. I have high ocular pressure which puts a strain on these holes and I've looked for strains of cannabis to relieve this pressure. I have grown A-Train and Afghani both of which tend to help but I would appreciate any CBD high strain suggestions which would help with the eye pressure. I live in Tennessee and I have a pretty good growing period for farming. I would appreciate any help you might have on identifying eye-friendly strains to help me in my golden years. So what would you say to John Kay? Yes. So uh, I actually had to consult with a friend on this. My friend Lisa Calvin uh, was a bud tender at Mountain Medicinals in Idaho Springs in Colorado uh, and also a glaucoma patient since 2011. Uh, And she told me that uh, the cannabinoid CBG, uh, so cannabigerol rather than cannabidiol, uh, plays a major role in reducing ocular pressure. Uh, but also that very few strains have much CBG. Um, but this was a, f- a little while ago, so hopefully there's a few more out there now because uh, I know that you know the, the marketplace for CBG and CBN uh, has increased tremendously, CBN particularly for um, sleep purposes and, and insomnia and that kind of thing, uh, and CBG specifically in this case for uh, reducing ocular pressure uh, for our in the eyes, the uh, glaucoma patients and and other um, eye injuries and diseases and stuff. So I also heard that Mickey Cush, uh, that's a TGA genetic strain um, from Subcool and Miss Jill back in the day, Um, but their Mickey Cush uh, has a decent amount of CBG, uh, but also that's somewhat anecdotal. Uh, We really need to see more testing and more high CBG strains out there. Um, another thing that Lisa recommends, though, is the juicing uh, young marijuana sprouts uh, and even, you know, fan leaves as well and consuming uh, cannabis in some way or another, like particularly the juicing way every four hours uh, for the best results. Um, CBD definitely plays a role in reducing pressure from, from glaucoma. So, um, you know, you want high CBD strains, but I think CBG is going to uh, definitely be discovered as something even more uh, for that particular thing, more eye-friendly. And definitely check out cbdcrew.org. That's like um, the definitive source, uh, our friends in Europe that have been studying CBD for decades and um, and are, you know, also well aware of all the different strains and also the – the ratios of CBD to THC and CBG and all of that. That's really, to me, the most important thing. What we talked about with Todd McCormick uh, and, you know, how he call, doesn't call it the entourage effect. It's more of the ensemble. And um, and it's all about what role each of those uh, cannabinoids plays uh, in that ensemble. Uh, but definitely look into CBG. 
uh, check out cbdcrew.org. And I hope that helps you out, John. All right. Very good. Thank you, Dr. Danko. And thank you, John. Thanks to everybody who wrote in this week. Uh, That's going to do it for our cultivation uh, section. But we are going to take another question over on Patreon about bud rot. So if you're interested in that, uh, join us on patreon.com slash Danny Danko and learn a little more about bud rot. If you have a question for the show, get in touch with us. Our email, once again, is info at growbudyourself.com. What do you say we take a little break, come back, and then wrap this sucker up? Let's do it. Hey guys, I want to tell you about one of our favorite sponsors, Excelsior Extracts. Outcast and TOH from Excelsior are incredible people, incredible growers, and they make an amazing product. Their THC-infused pain rub is made by patients for patients, and it provides powerful relief from pain. This product was developed to treat Outcast's chronic pain, and trust me, this is a super potent topical that really works. You can find out more about Excelsior on Instagram at Excelsior Extracts. That's E-X-C-E-L-S-I-O-R-E-X-T-R-A-C-T-S. DM them there to learn more about their amazing pain rub. And don't forget to tell them that Grow Bud Yourself sent you. All right, welcome back. Uh, I want to say thank you, as always, to DJ Jacques and Winstrong uh, for the song that the show is based all about, about to grow bud yourself. I um, want to thank our sponsors, uh, Sweet Leaf. Remember that crazy uh, K005 promo that they're running with our Patreon? Uh, I want to thank uh, Excelsior Extracts. Check them out on Instagram and uh, check out the THC Infused Pain Relief Rub. It really works. Um, Sweet Leaf Nutrients. Uh, Danko 15 gets you 15% off and then there's a bunch more you can get off uh, if you join Patreon at different levels uh, up to 25% off which is pretty crazy uh, Rocket Seeds the code there is GBY10 for 10% off uh, Organic Rev Growth Stimulant code there same GBY10 for 10% off uh, to rev up your grow room with Organic Rev um, we also have our affiliate program with Vapor.com so if you're buying the new Puffco Peak Pro, uh, which is my daily driver at home, uh, you can get 20% off, which is pretty substantial. They don't really do that for a lot of people, uh, but you use the code GROWBUDYOURSELF20 uh, at vapor.com for everything site-wide, and that includes all the uh, accessories and rolling papers and vaporizers and pretty much anything. I mean, CBD products and more. So uh, check them out at vapor.com. Um yeah, man. Thanks to Brett Stevens uh, from FOS. Uh, that's F O H S E uh, Lighting. Uh, you can check them out at uh, FOS, F O H S E dot com. And uh, yeah, great company with great product. And uh, yeah, man. Uh, Rocket Seeds, I mentioned. Uh, their promo is GBY10. And Mike G, my co host, my compadre, my producer. My friend. <laughs> How do you feel about episode 73? I, I feel like we've done good work. Well, excellent. We uh, will then uh, be back next week with episode 74. But for now, uh, you know, turn off the lights, send the ground crew home. The game is over. Put it in the books. <laughs> <laughs>